All right, this should be the end of your week. Um, so hopefully it's been a good week. Hopefully you guys did fine on your quiz. Uh, obviously I won't have this graded until I get back and get those on Monday. So it'll be middle of next week, probably by the time I get those back to you. Um, so wrapping up our week this week, we're going to do FOIL, which is multiplying a binomial times a binomial. These are your notes for that. Uh, you will have a sheet that will walk you through this as well. Or an assignment, I believe, out of the book uh, is actually what that is. Um, this is what you'll have to do when you get done with this. So these notes will help you out with this. Uh, binomial times binomial. This is actually distributive property. Um, so binomial, we should know, means two terms. So we're talking about like x plus 4 times x minus 3. Right, that's our problem there. Uh, then we would... In order to multiply this, we need to do uh, distributive property. So what we're basically going to do is take this x here. We're going to multiply it by the second set of parentheses. And then we're going to take this 4 here. And we're going to multiply that by the whole set of parentheses. That's second. And what that works out to be is a little thing called first. And then we're going to take the outer numbers. And we're going to take the inner numbers. And then we're going to take the last numbers or values there. And there is your word FOIL. That's what that stands for. First, outer, inner, and last. So first means we're going to take the first term in each parenthesis. So the first term is x and x. So I got x times x and x times x is the definition of x squared all right outer terms so if i'm looking at this whole thing i've got two outer terms and then i've got two inner terms so two outer terms x and negative three and then the two inner terms are the four and the x that's here right so if i go outer terms i'm going x times negative 3, which is negative 3x. And then I go inner terms, and I'll again outer, inner, inner is 4 times x. Make sure, excuse me, make sure you keep the signs with these, so like x times negative 3, positive 4 times x. So I've got 4 times x, which is 4x, and then my last term, so the last term in the first parenthesis is positive 4, the last term in the second parenthesis is negative 3, so I got 4 times negative 3, and 4 times negative 3 is negative 12. Now every case says it has to have to work out like this, but as far as the ones that you're going to be doing, the majority of them are going to work out, so these middle two terms right here, Actually, they're going to be like terms. All right, I'm going to bring all this together. Okay, as far as combined like terms, I got x squared, which is just going to stay by itself. So I got x squared. If I combine the negative 3 and the 4x, negative 3x plus 4x is going to be 1x. And combine those like terms like we're adding them. And then I got a minus 12 at the end. So I guess you can see. Minus 12 at the end. Okay. So x squared, there were no other x squared after I got done. So I just brought that over. Negative 3x plus 4x was a 1x. So you could put a 1 there if you want to. It's not wrong. Uh, you just don't need it. And then the minus 12 at the end is the only constant. So it comes over there. And here is your expanded or expanded polynomial okay. Okay. we can do this with different exponents as well so I might have a squared minus 9 and maybe I have 3a plus a squared minus 9 times 3a plus 2. 
I want to multiply that out, so I'm going to use FOIL. Uh, now you don't have to write out FOIL every time like I did up here. I'm going to, I'm going to do it the first few times, just so it's a nice, easy pattern for you to remember. Uh, and some of you, that will be very helpful. So, F, O, I. So F being the first, so again, the first term in each parenthesis. So A squared and 3A, that's the first term in each. A squared times 3A. Right, we're going to go back to our rules of exponents. We now have the same base written twice. So our rule was to add those exponents. First of all, we got a coefficient to deal with. There's a 1 in front of this A squared. So we'll do 1 times 3. 1 times 3 is 3. And then I add these exponents because that's my rule for like bases. A to the 2 plus 1. 2 plus 1 would give me 3. So 3a to the 3rd is the first term. Alright, the outer terms. I got a squared on the outside over here. 2 is on the outside over here. So I got a squared times 2. Well, a squared times 2, I got a 1 in front of that. 1 times 2 is 2. There is no a or a squared or anything here behind the 2. So I just have 2a squared. Take the inner terms. I'm going to take this negative with the 9. So I got negative 9 times 3a. Times 3a. Negative 9 times 3 is negative 27. There's nothing to combine that A with there, so it's just going to stay negative 27 A. And then my last terms, I take the negative 9 times the last term over here, which is the positive 2. And negative 9 times positive 2 is negative 18. any point you needed to pause in there, just ask for it. Alright, so now we've got to combine, bring everything together that's like. The so one up here, I had the x terms, I brought those together into one x term. But now I've got a to the third. I don't have any other a to the thirds. I've got a to the second. I've got no other a to the second. I've got a to the first. There's no other a to the first. And then I've got a constant, which is negative 18. So none of these are like, so when I bring this together, I do 3a to the third plus 2a squared minus 27a minus 18. Again, usually what we're going to see more often is those middle terms right there will both combine, but in this case it just worked out so that they didn't. All right, so you got a couple pages out of the book there to work for your homework. Uh, that will be due on Monday. Do not forget that your test corrections are due on Monday. That is the absolute last day I will take them. So they need to be done before you come into class on Monday. You're not going to have time to work on them in class. I will not take them on Tuesday. And again, keep in mind, you can get a whole lot of credit back. Just make sure you have worked them three times each. Um, to get your full credit back for the problem, otherwise you won't get any credit back. And please make sure you have worked all three times, you got the same answer, and double check to make sure that it is the correct answer, because I did give you the answers to the test. So, I will see you on Monday, hope you have a good weekend, and we're almost to Christmas.